very often I come across students who would, you know, come and tell me that, ma'am, uh, I'm average, you know, this is what I can achieve. So, so many of you put this label of average when you describe yourself. And, you know, when we think about uh, certain other people or our peer groups, some of them always stand out and we think, wow, they are excellent, right? And uh, we explain their excellence as a matter of fact, ki, you know, uh, they are born intelligent or they just excel in everything they do and we oversimplify their excellence, right? Not just you. When I was uh, younger, when I was naive, you know, I would actually use it as a defense mechanism for myself. So when I wouldn't score well, I would say, okay, that person scored more than me because, you know, they are excellent. I am average. But then as time passes by and life humbles you and you understand things better, I realized that excellence is never an accident. Excellence is something that each one of us can attain, right? And that is what we also should know. So now if I talk about how can we attain excellence in not just academics, but in any sphere of life, maybe, you know, how I can be an excellent doctor, an excellent gynecologist, an excellent pediatrician, or how I can be an excellent, you know, uh, maybe daughter, maybe an excellent teacher, an excellent, you know, whatever way or whatever sphere of life you talk about, why can't we try and achieve excellence? So what are the three ingredients that we need to achieve excellence in any sphere of life? So the first ingredient to achieve excellence is high intention the intention, the desire to excel in it, right? If you always keep labeling yourself average, there is, you know, you never feel the need to go an extra mile, right? So you have to have this strong desire that I have to be the best one out there, okay? And that is how we create a bigger impact. So every time you go out, it has to be with the intention that I have to be the best person in the room, the best doctor around, the best clinician that I can offer and the best student that I can be. So high intention is the first ingredient. But now when I think of that and maybe when you listen to this, you will think, okay, we all desire to be the best. We all want to be rank one. I mean, that is beyond doubt that we, we know that rank one is something which is so, so desirable. So now only high intention does not lead you to the right path. So what is the second ingredient for this excellence? The second ingredient that you need to achieve excellence after high intention is sincere effort, okay? Only then your path is aligned. You know, I just can't say I want to be rank one but not put in the efforts. I cannot say I want to be the best teacher but yet not work on my flaws, not work on my skills. I cannot be the best surgeon if I don't take the best hands-on experience. So sincere effort ensures that our intention is aligned to the path that we have focused on, right? Sincere efforts mean also truthfulness. So whenever you are dedicating some time, maybe to a patient, maybe to your studies, maybe to your parents, maybe to anyone, just be truthful in that phase of time. And that's how you will put in your best possible efforts, right? So the two ingredients that keep you on the right track are high intention as well as sincere efforts. Now, when I talk about the third ingredient and when I especially think of all you students, I feel, you know, all these bachas have already cleared their exams, uh, the PMT exam. They're all doctors. They are all uh, people with very, very high potential. So, you know, most of you would have the high intention and majority of you would also be putting in the sincere efforts. Then what could be the demarcator to help you achieve excellence in your peer group? And that is going to be intelligent execution. That's where you lack most of the times, right? I want to get a good rank. I am studying very hard, but Am I studying in an intelligent way? Is it smart study? Or is it just spending hours and hours 
but still not converting my study hours into effective ranks or effective correct questions, right? So intelligent execution will be your demarcator. Now, just let me explain you what could be the intelligent execution. Number one, in the recent transform sessions, I talked about, you know, uh, the three ingredients for your study as well, which was content, MCQ, skill, and revision. Now, if we have to do a smart study, what kind of content we use? Do we use content which is bulk based or do we use something which is revisable, something which can be done multiple times? Because, you know, no matter what uh, we think of when it is like vast, uh, you know, content, when it is 19 subjects, I have to do it some way that I can do multiple readings. Otherwise, it's very difficult to retain. So it has to be revisable. It has to be high yielding. It has to be, uh, you know, something which has the highest probability of being asked rather than spending my precious time and energy on, uh, you know, uncommon and unique things, right? Similarly, when we do the MCQ practice, do we count only the number of questions or do we count the quality of the questions as well? Do we count in the approach to the MCQs as well? Most of these students, when they come back to me, they say, ma'am, I am practicing 100 questions a day. Is it good enough? It sounds very good, right? But still, my thing is, I ask them, okay, are you improving your GT scores? And they say, ma'am, it's actually stuck at 130, which means there is a gap, okay? And then you're not doing smart study. So instead of counting the number of MCQs you're doing in a day, focus on the quality, focus on approach to the MCQs, focus on identifying your weakness through those MCQs so that you can put your energy in that part. That is what is smart study. So even if you're not practicing 100 or 200 MCQs, but you are doing 50 MCQs a day, which give you the right approach, which give you the key things which have high probability, your hit rate will be higher than someone who's practicing thousands of MCQs, okay? Similarly, revision. Okay, when we talk about revision, what could be the intelligent way of revising? It should be consistency. So let's start revising one topic a day, something that I've, you know, revised previously or read previously. So maybe one topic a day, identifying topics which you are weak at. Let's not study, you know, something because my friend is studying that. Let's study a topic because I am weak at this. I, I fumble at this. I do MCQs wrong in this topic, right? So select things to be revised, which are high yielding, which, uh, you know, maybe are, uh, I would say, volatile for you and which maybe have been left out because, you know, maybe you were doing a little superficial study and some things were left out. So that is the idea of planning your revision as well. Also, Every revision should take a lesser, lesser, lesser time, uh, you know, as you go forward. So now coming back to where we started, excellence is not an accident. Excellence is something you, me, everyone can achieve in any sphere of life. And the three most important ingredients of excellence or achieving excellence are high intention. Okay. Second is your sincere efforts and third is intelligent execution. I hope through this video you are able to analyze in which of the parts you lack and next time you don't describe yourself as average but you describe yourself as work in progress towards achieving excellence.